Hello there, Chris here from Backers Models, and you've clicked on this video to watch me build the turret of the I Love Kit EZ8 Sherman 1 16th scale. So I've put the two halves together, and I'll just go over this portion of the build before we get into building the capulas, 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 <laughs> whatever, and the hatches. So uh, it fits together quite nicely, and it does. They do give you a few male and female plugs. I cut off the male bits because it was actually too tight. I wanted to have a little bit of play. And I don't necessarily do this all the time. I don't normally tape parts together, but because of that, I wanted that the uh, this seam, which you're going to have to fill and you're going to have to resurface this nice texture they've put on there. I wanted it to be as just aligned as possible to reduce um, uh, sanding. So I've taped, I've glued some bits, taped some other bits, and I've done glue to the inside first just to let that set off. So while that's going on. I've started to put some parts on the top. Now, something to note before you do any gluing, and I've got my SMS ceramic scraper here for a reason, there are some mold seam lines, some witness lines. So I've left this one off to show you. You can see that one right there. Okay, uh, so it's raised and it goes down the back of these, um, of these metal bits, and there's a mold seam line going all the way across there, which sh should not be there on the vehicle. There's the actual seam. Two, I've got to tighten that up. There's the seam of the two halves which you have to fill. Which leads me to this next point. They tell you to put this part on, L7, uh, pretty much straight away. And it just slots in there like so. I did that off camera, no problem. There we go. <coughs> it's actually a press fit, which is a good because you don't want to glue it on straight away because how are you going to fill this seam here? Okay, so just leave that off, fill that seam in properly, redo your surface texture, and then Put that back on. It's a press fit anyway, so I'm just going to leave it there to uh, to remind myself. Uh, the only other thing too is don't get confused. This is a curved hook, the one that goes on here, as opposed to these two side hooks, which are straight and have a big flange on them. And yeah, I've put a few things in. The uh, the mantlet is rotatable, so don't glue these pins in on the side, and they are matching. You will you will see that they um one male and female bit is bigger than the other. So there we go, we're stuck into it. Uh, the next part you'll see is I'll get all of the, uh, I'm gonna start building the outside manlet and all the other little pieces that go on top here and then we'll do these hatches. Well, this turret's going together super fast. I have to say, and I did mention it in another post recently that this, this kit is much more uh, easier to build and fits so much better than any tack on kit I've done. So I. I still wonder about the Andy Hobby Headquarters stuff, the um, the Sherman that came out with them, supposedly is a lot better detail, supposedly is a really good kit, but this thing falls together in comparison to any TACOM kit that I've made so far, so, and the Andy Hobby Headquarters stuff is all TACOM, so, anyway, um, yeah, that's been my experience so far, so I've I've put a few extra parts on and one thing I will point out is they give you this little insert to do the coax machine gun there but it's solid so you need to drill it out so I've just drilled that out so it's actual barrel and then basically you've got all these little sub assemblies so you've got the uh, the, ha the commander's cupola uh, which is workable you've got the, the hatches which I actually haven't put on yet but that's the uh, loader's hatch um, and yeah these these parts just snip in like that we've got the um, commander's sight as well it goes in the front and this actually just snicks in in fact I'm going to probably leave it uh, leave it off so I can paint it a bit that periscope a bit easier see if I can get this in on camera there we go see see what I mean just the fit is just it's just bloody fantastic so yeah we just this goes in like that snap so I'm not even using glue, and I think this one goes around to the back, so I'll just put this one in first. Uh, famous last words, will it get in? Yep, there we go, see, all in. Um, let's put the mantlet on. Now yes, the, the rubber mantlet is not the best, so you can leave it off if you want. Got that upside down, no, that's right. So again, that just, oops wrong hole just snaps on there like that and remains workable so if you don't want to put the canvas canvas cover on you don't have to I've trimmed it as best I could Oop, upside down Miss Jane I think no that's the right way around okay so that goes on like so 
so the fit's not too bad I think it may I think I've got two pieces on there I shouldn't have uh, and I might play around with that just to get it to fit quite right and then when we talk about the barrel okay so you get the metal barrel and the detail upset and then you get the um, the muzzle is three pieces and it just slots on there uh, I just need to fill it's got somewhat of a seam, a little bit of a gap there, just need to fill that, but that just snaps in like so, and there we go, I haven't even done that done that before, and it just snicks in there, Oop, the whole thing comes out, that's fine. So yeah, all I've got left to do, really, is I need to construct the uh, 50 calibre, uh, and that's it, the main construction's done, so I'll clean up these parts next, and we'll go through the process putting it together, and then hopefully I can get the, uh, the whole the whole turret on the uh, on the beast and it's done. Let's finish the last bit of assembly on the entire kit and that's the Browning M2 50 calibre machine gun that goes on the top uh, in the loader's hatch there, up, just up there. Now it's only got 15 parts, I've uh, cleaned them all up and I'm just going to show you how they go together and a few of them actually just snap together, um, they just like the barrel sleeve here, the cooling thing onto the main barrel. I drilled out the barrel a little bit more. It was a little bit and it was a little bit off center and there's some flash at the end of the um, the muzzle brake there so you just need to clean that up. Uh, the charging handle I haven't actually glued that together that's just um, the wooden charging bit is just dry fitted in there. Uh, and So let's just build the breech block. So what I've done I did a dry fit on these two main parts and I found that the um, they're slightly not mismolded just off molded a little bit and um, yeah, if you use the male and female pegs that they give you, it's slightly, yeah, slightly, you know, that. <laughs> it's not that bad, but anyway, so these just go together. Uh, and then, oh, I'm missing two pieces. Look at that. I forgot two pieces. I've got to do the side plates. <laughs> I've got to find those. Always happens when you're on camera. Everything doesn't go to plan. I'm just looking at the instructions there. I'm missing B1 and B2. The bananas in pajamas. So I better go find those bananas. But I'll glue this, glue this together first. And then um, I can put the the top plate on and uh, the trigger which is that u-shaped little jobby there where is he there he's there and the charging handle so let's just get this underway first and glued together and then yeah, you've got to find those extra parts um, so the main cleanup for these parts is on the bottom and as much as I would love to get David Parker's um, 3d printed version of this particular accessory yeah, you can still see that it's slightly mismolded there, just, just slightly off. So just slide it around a little bit, that's why I'm not putting a lot of glue on, just to get that right. And I'll just do a test fit of the barrel before I go on. So yeah, it goes in there okay. Alright, so I'll just, and then at the back there, just get this done. Alright, so I'm just going to let that go off. I'll go find those extra parts and we'll get stuck back into it. I found the missing parts and I've put them on, B1 and B2. It's just the, uh, the the cradle, I guess, the the plates that go onto the gun itself, and I've put on the little uh, trigger there. Maybe we'll zoom in so you can see what the hell I'm talking about. So while I um, was rummaging for those spare parts, I'll show you these other ones. So if you whoop, get these out of the way, so if you remember when I was doing the bow machine gun, um, and I realised you actually don't need to include it. So there's the assembled one, and then the brass machine gun uh, is on the outside so you do get a whole spare one there and they and plus on the parts there's another 30 caliber machine gun Oop, there's a, the halves there plus two different types of barrels um, so yeah you can put another just with the parts there maybe buy another brass barrel and you're good to go for um, a spare one on the top they actually give you another mount as well to put uh, on the roof there and a lot of these Shermans they moved they moved around the mounts, they had some of them had, you know, they put the 50 caliber on the back and they had the 30 caliber on the front and whatever. So it's good to have those parts in there. So let me just get this um, assembled and I found just doing this off camera that the, um, let me just check the references again. Yeah, this top cover plate, if I can get in camera, it literally snaps in there like so. Doesn't need to be glued at all. Uh, the charging handle, which I believe from memory, I have only fired the 50 caliber once when I was in the army. Uh, that goes to the forward position there. That will need to be glued in, so I might do that in a minute. But it, actually, look at that. It's 
The fit's so good on this kit in some parts, like like I said, this charging handle um, is just snapped into that, that little part there and that's just pushed into the groove the groove there. And then again with the um, the main handle, so you'll have a wide grip a wide notch uh, there and a, and a narrow one, well the narrow one goes on the bottom so I'll just see if I can do this without flinging that trigger off so there we go, that just sits in there so not many things are glued on here so far so let's get the barrel on and the barrel just snicks in there like that there we go, it's quite, quite a long uh, kit all by itself isn't it, so let's just try uh, which way does this go? You've got to get the, I believe it goes that way. So let's see if I can do this without, I've never done this. So I might just take that charging handle out and I'll just take this off for now. I probably shouldn't have put that trigger on. I always, sometimes when you're reading instructions, they say, oh, put all these delicate parts on first, then shove this big part into this big part. It's like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, so I think, let me just check the, no, I'm in, going in the wrong spot. It's actually up here. If I can do it right. Come on, get in the hole. That's what she said. Whoop. I think I need to trim that. Yeah, it needs trimming. Okay, I'll do that. These little poles, these little notches are actually... Yeah, I can see it now. Now we've got my better glasses on. They've got flash all over them. Let's just leave that for now and I'll show you the um, assembly of the uh, ammo box now the belt they give you has massive attachment points at the back of the the brass there and i had to be very careful under a loop to cut these pieces off and then i realized actually you're not going to see most of them so let's look at the instructions there's the carrying plate which attaches to the um the where does that go to it should go on this side here yep there it is there's a big notch there so that just snicks in there let's see what the fits like okay well there we go i'm getting resistance done look at that Okay, so we'll just leave that there. How, how about that? All right. I was a bit concerned when I was cleaning up the ammo case that the ends were not really well defined. And then I realized, well, one end's going to be covered by that. Again, schnick fit. See that? No glue. And then the other end's going to be covered by this retaining plate. I can't remember which upside down is Jane. No, it's that way. So it goes in there like that. So <laughs> all, your, all your hard work cleaning up all that... Um, you know, the sprue attachment points and there's a mold seam line and oh, you know, it's going to be seen. No, wait, see a thing. All right, so it's saying to put the belt in like this. And I guess the pointy bit goes to the front. Okay, yep, it goes in the gun like that. There we go. And then we put the uh, cover plate over like so. Oh, that's interesting. It's not really going in. Am I doing this wrong? People out there who've actually fired this, I've only, like I said, I've only done it once. I've never used it. You know, being an ossifer, I didn't really get a chance to play around with the big stuff. Just the normal. There we go. So it just goes on like that. Uh, so I will actually glue that in, um, or will I? I may not. I may actually leave that off because painting that separately might be easier. Or will it? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going to clean up those other parts and then we'll finish up. Well, there it is. I managed to uh, get that 50 caliber sheet, uh, sheet, what do you call it, belt? <laughs> what am I thinking, sheet? Uh, belt of ammo on in the box there. Uh, I did glue in a few of the things like the handle and the, um, the charging handle and uh, yeah, of course the barrel is there, but everything else is all dry fitted. Uh, there's probably only that one seam underneath there that this needs filling and the rest is all fine. Uh, yeah, so that's going together quite well. So like I said, this is loosely fitted and it just snicks into the ammo tray there like that. And let's put it on the loader uh, hatch, which I think spins around. Does it? Nope, that's going to sit there. Okay, I'm going to call me a liar. So here's the now completed Sherman. So here endeth the build series. Well, not really. Okay, there's the turret. Okay, the whole thing's there. Um, <coughs> yeah. So here ends the basic build series. So I'm going to give you a little preview of what I'm going to be doing uh, next or in the future. So I've only basically just put this thing together, cleaned up a few things like a few ejection pin marks, but and made a few holes where necessary that I was going to do later. The next video on this, which is going to be quite a while because I've got things to do, other things to do, 
is I'm going to super detail the um, the kit. By super detail, what does that mean? Well, from the top down, I can just see straight away. Uh, I need to redo the, the cast texture on the turret, as well as um, Trumpeter I Love Kit Merit, insert Chinese brand name here, have done. Uh, it's not as good as what you can see in the reference photos, and in 116 scale, it really needs a lot of heavy spatula, cake decorating style, really rough and guts um, things. I mean, all the reference photos I've got show that these tanks do not look pretty close up, and in this scale, you can't get away with that. So that's what I'll be doing first, is uh, cast textures and other things, and on the rest of the hull as well, some of these shiny bits should not be shiny, they should have some pitting and some things. And then when you get down to, uh, like for example, the, this front plate here, there is a little bit of texture and stuff. I'm gonna, it's a little bit too um, uniform, so I'm gonna rough that up even more. But then the weld seams. The weld seams are a little bit too good and they're missing on some major components. For example, where, where I've put, where they get you to put in, you know, uh, loops, handles, and other things that were welded on, like some of these, um, uh, light brackets and in fact at the front here, I mean that is a major, not a major, but it's a fit issue. Can you see the holes there, you know, as the parts go into the hull? That's fine because they're going to be covered up by weld seams, weld seams, weld seams, lots of them all the way around. Uh, it's not that hard to do, particularly in this scale, it's, it's actually a lot, e lot easier to, to manipulate the, um, the whatever material you're going to use. I'll probably just use Tamiya epoxy putty like I normally do. So that's that's basically it, is is adding those extra details and then the last thing is, and I'll just reach out a camera shot here, I need to work out the stowage. How am I gonna put um, things on the back? So I've got these lovely value gear ones. Uh, I have to be careful with these. Hang on, I've got another pack here. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. They're, they're great quality um, stuff. So I've got these, I've got some tarps, I've got some boxes, and I have to reach over out of camera again. Ugh. I've got these classy hobby, um, full size 40 gallon drums and jerry cans. And I've also got a lot of spare uh, tracks as well. Again, reaching out of camera. Okay, I've got lots of spare tracks and things to to put on. And I've seen um, reference photos where they, you know, almost every Sherman has a, a, a timber board put across here. Okay, and then they load it up with whatever, rations, women's lingerie, the whole lot. Jerry cans. Or spare tracks. I've seen that. Oop, there goes my. Oop, there goes the gun. Oh no. Let's just take that off. <laughs> or, um, yeah, whatever. So there's. I'm not building one particular tank. I'm going to be doing something. Okay. Um, so I need to work out what I need to do is I've got the classy hobby uh, 116 scale M5 Stewart. So I need to work out what stowage I'm going to put that on that so I can then work out what to use, what to do with these uh, value gear sets and the classy hobby um, barrels and so forth. So that's what's going to come next, but it's not going to be for a while. So apologies for that, but I've got other fish to fry. So I hope you enjoyed that build series. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think this is a great kit. Uh, accuracy issues aside, it goes together really, really well. And yeah, the tracks are a bit of a pain. Um, like I said in my review, I would not buy this particular kit. I would buy the second boxing, which is a lot cheaper and yes it doesn't have as many it doesn't have a lot of these photo photo etch options and so forth but they're really easy to fix yourself um yeah i would get the second boxing which is actually more accurate it's got the better tracks it's got the uh it doesn't have the t23 turret it's got the later turret uh and as i've shown in the, you know you can make the two types of travel lock it's got all the options there and it's a lot cheaper and it's cheaper than the andy hobby headquarters um sherman as well and it's not tack on based so with that, thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one and um, happy modeling.